In a previous video, we looked at linked lists. What are they and how we can initialize them in our program and sort of use them. Now we're going to take a look at how you can iterate over a linked list. Since I did say that um, a linked list is an alternative to arrays. So there are three parts to iterating over an array. Similarly, there are three parts to iterating over a linked list. So we can actually make a uh, sort of table to take a look at uh, the similarities between those two. All right, so here's a simple table. We have arrays on the left side and linked lists on the right side. The first part to iterating an array is what? Is initialization of uh, that counter, right? You start, for example, a for loop starts with four int i equals zero or a while loop. Before a while loop, you actually do i equals or int i equals zero or something like that. So we can note here for initialization for the initialization part of iterating on array, we have i equals to zero, just like that. Nice. The second part for an, for an array is the exit condition. Like at some point you have to uh, get out of that loop. What's the exit condition? Well, the exit condition is usually i less than n. So if i is higher or equal than n, n being the number of elements inside that array, well, we can shoot out of that loop. Simple enough. And lastly is the step. How do you actually go from the uh, zero element to the first element and from the first element to the second element? That's simply by iterating this i or incrementing this i. So if I go here and type in i++, that's what we're doing. Basically, those are the three parts of our for loop. Similarly, for linked lists, we have these three parts. Now, this int i equals zero, this initialization part basically says, okay, start at the position, position zero. So when I say array of i, the first time I take a look at the first element of that array. Similarly, with, link, with linked lists, we have to have an element and that should point to the first element of our linked lists. What is the first element of our linked list? That's the root element. So we can say here uh, something equals to the address of root or just root itself if it's dynamically allocated. That something is gonna have to be a node pointer. Of course, I'm gonna say node pointer and I'm gonna call it current, right? From the current element, just like so. So that's the initialization part. Simple enough, if root is defined on the stack, you have it like that. If root is actually a pointer, you don't have to do the ampersand. So next up, I wanna go over the actual step of iterating the linked list. And we're gonna come back to the exit condition because that's a bit easier to understand that way. So here we say I++, basically we assign I to be higher with one than the previous value, right? From zero, we go to one. That denotes sort of that we went from the, from the current element to the next one, right? When we say array of i. Similarly, we want to do the same here, but we want this current to change, not just i, not just a number, but the pointer itself. So we have to assign current to be a different value. And that value should be what? Current arrow next because that's the only the only thing that it can be really right you have current right is an arrow to this building block but inside this building block there is also an arrow to another building block right so what what current can do is say okay well i'm gonna take the value from inside this building block and actually point to the next building block which is here this is what we're basically doing So coming back to the exit condition, since we're assigning it the next, remember when I said that in a previous video that uh, the last element of a linked list is always going to be null, right? That's basically saying, okay, well, you're here, you're at the end, there's nothing more from here onwards. So you can stop iterating the uh, linked list, right? Okay, so what's the condition for that? Well, since we are, so since we are actually um, 
reassigning current to be current.next, at one point, current.next, or current arrow next in this case, will actually be null, right? Since we have to have an end of this array. So if current is null because its previous one dot next was null, then we can exit the loop. We have nothing else to do. We can just go home and we're done. So what we can say is current doesn't equal to null. So do this step until current is null. Basically this says, so if this sentence is false at any point, just exit the loop and we're done. So let's get to implementing all that. So in the previous video, we had this uh, simple linked list with two elements, 15 and negative two, right? So if I try to run this, we're still gonna get 15 and negative two on the screen. Now, what I want is to change these printfs. So instead of having two printfs, I just have one inside a loop. We're gonna use a while loop simply because it's easier to understand, but then we're gonna go over uh, a for loop so that you can implement it however you want. So to start off, we need that initialization part. So that's simple. We just say node pointer current is well, root, root is just not enough because, because root is actually on the stack, right? So we have to get the address of that because current is actually a pointer to a node, right? Nice. Now we have the exit condition, which we're going to place in the loop in the while uh, condition statement. I'm going to say while uh, while what? While current is not null, do something. And we're gonna do something, but the step, the step is what? The step is overwriting this current pointer to be the next block. So we refer to the next block up. So we can say here current equals current of next. And this is a simple loop that will go over every single element inside our linked list. And lastly, of course, we should use this current element to print every single element inside our linked list. So you can say here, printf percent %d backslash n and say this current arrow x. Right? So we want to get the information for the current element and then go to the next one. And what do you know? Current.x is actually different this time because we have assigned it a different value, which is in fact the next value inside our linked list. If I remove these lines and launch it, you, you'll notice I get both 15 and negative two. And in fact, we can add as many elements as we want inside our linked list. So, So I have here changed the code a little bit so that we have three elements now. So right, root.next is the second element, which is allocated here and its value is negative two. And then root.next arrow next is the third element. And it's allocated here, its value is 22 and its next uh, pointer is null. So that this guy now became the last element inside our linked list. So if I try to run this, you'll notice I get these three values on the screen. Also, don't forget to free the memory after you have used it. So root dot next arrow next. And here, as you can see, actually, it matters the uh, order in which you free the memory, because if I were to free this one first, then this guy would be basically invalid, right? And you would get an error. So if I try to run this again, I get all three elements on the screen. So this is really nice. And lastly, like I promised, let's change this to a for loop. So what's a for loop? A for loop is simple. A for loop has um, an initialization part, which is what? Which is our node current equals the address of root, right? Then it has an exit condition, which is this guy, right? And then it has an increment, which is this guy. So it just kind of places everything inside one uh, place. It's a bit more ugly because, well, it has a lot of things here going on, but 
if you understand uh, if you did understand the while loop you will understand also the for loop as well and if I try to move this here and delete everything this should work exactly the same as you notice here so now you can see that iterating over a linked list really looks like iterating over an array it's just these are a bit more sophisticated ways you have to use to uh, go through the linked list, but it has the same basic uh, parts to iterating it. Right? And then once you're done with that, you can use this as just any other uh, part of the array, except you're going to have to usually use the arrow operator because current is actually a pointer. It's not just an element that you can do reference with the square brackets. So I hope this video was useful. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Uh, in the next videos, we're going to talk about ways you can insert inside the linked list or delete elements from the linked list because as you can notice, this is not the greatest way to add elements to the linked list. If I were to want to add, for example, uh, 17 elements, it would be kind of tedious because, well, I would have root dot next, arrow next, arrow next 17 times inside one single line of code. And that just doesn't look great at all, right? So we're going to create a function that does that in a, in a future video. For now, thanks so much for watching and see you guys next time. Take care.